Welcome back everybody. On the last episode we scouted out the White Valley map and did the scout tasks along with it. On this episode we're going to get started by rescuing the Dairy Longhorn and we're going to take the big cat and use this for the job. Let's get started. We'll head into the White Valley map just up at the top of this hill. A little tricky going up this hill with these tires because it's really icy. So try to stay to the side if possible. Get some extra traction on the snow. Might have to put it in low and use diff lock with this truck. It's kind of notorious for only one wheel spinning, the rest of them just sitting there. Unless you have the diff lock engaged. We haven't really used the big cat for anything yet other than yanking the highway trucks into the drop off zone there down at the sawmill. So this will be a good test to see how well it does in a little bit more extreme environments. This next part here is the tricky part because of the guardrail. I'm actually gonna go around it, and go up through the trees here instead. Seems to be working pretty good with this thing. Not really worried about it getting stuck. Just over the top of the hill there is where we'll find the gateway. I can cut back to the road, put it in auto, and let's get around that corner. Let's go. White Valley. So just down the hill, we'll find the Dairy Longhorn. There's a couple ways you can rescue this truck. Um, I like to use the service trailer if I'm planning to try to pull it up the hill backwards. The truck is partially repaired, but the gearbox is damaged just enough to where it likes to slip out of gear into neutral. So if you do want to pull it up the hill backwards, then I would recommend repairing it first with the service trailer and you can get it up the hill just by pulling it up in reverse after starting the engine but since we're using this big truck i'm actually going to take a different approach so we'll go down the hill and then we'll pull it down the riverbed and out the other end so just make sure you're going slow here so you don't lose control and then just kind of slowly creep your way down the hill here when you get to the bottom Try to stay to the right and just go over the rocks around the truck. You can go around the left side too, but those rocks over there are a little bit more difficult to get over the top of. There we go. I'll just grab onto it. I'm only gonna start it if I need to. It's like I said, the gearbox slips out of, it slips out and then it just puts it in neutral. It doesn't really help itself that much, but you leave it turned off, gauge your diff lock. You should be able to crawl through here without any real issues at all. Might have to switch from one side to the other with the winch to get around these tight spots. Always try to winch the inside of the corner that you're turning. I'm having some difficulties, so I'll let go of it for a moment and then hook back up to it and just hold down my winch button to get it up through here. There we go. Now we're rolling right up over the top of those rocks. Just keep pulling it through the bottom. Make sure I go around the right side of this big rock. The truck does have some fuel in it. So if I get lo too low on the with the cat, I'll just steal some out of it. But we've hit the corner of the river. I'm just gonna take a right, right up between these rocks. We're gonna go right up the hill here. It can be a little bit tricky getting it through here, but it's not impossible. The big cat has a heavy winch, so it's got more strength than the other truck's winches do. But the engine is still the stock engine. It's not real powerful. Might have to let go of it and pull it with the winch let go of it, drive ahead, and then pull with the winch. These bushes down here in the bottom also get the dairy stuck on them pretty easily. Okay, I'll let go of it, pull up a little ways, and then I'll grab onto it again and just use the winch button to pull it down to pull it up the hill. I'm gonna try to stay to the left here where there's traction because this highway is pretty icy. It's difficult to pull with these tires when you're on the ice. We got it out of there. Nothing too serious there. I'll just pull it up I'll get ahead a little ways, so I have some distance between me and the truck. And from here, we just need to take it to the garage parking. It's kind of a long trip because, you know, we're pulling this thing. The cat doesn't have a whole lot of speed or power at the moment until we put the big engine in it. But it seems to be doing good. Actually, I'm getting some speed going now. Just be careful not to hit the guardrails or the poles. It's highway the entire way. Once you get on this highway, you'll be fine. Just follow the highway all the way to the garage. It's a little twisty and turny through here, but nothing too bad. And then coming up ahead, there's a bridge down, but that's not gonna stop us. We're just gonna go around it. 
So once we get here, just have to make sure you don't hit that hitbox like I just did. We're going to go off the left side, just like this, and then across the river. We won't have any issues. Just like that, right up the other side. You can go through there with any of the trucks. It's really easy to get through there. Now it's just uh, cruising back up the highway the rest of the way. To the right here is the little lake we were on with the CK1500 at the end of the last episode when we rescued that Chevy down by the shack. We still haven't come over here to this gas station yet. I'm actually gonna make a quick pit stop here because there's a little scout fuel trailer back here that I wanna discover and pull out. I'm gonna take this up the road a little bit later on and drop it off at that factory. There isn't really anywhere to fuel up on that part of the map, up by the factory. There's a couple of scout trailers up there in different spots but they're not really close to the factory. So I'll take that up there so we have a little extra buffer with our refueling once we get started doing work. For now, I'll just leave it right there. And the garage is just up ahead and around the corner. After this, we'll have another heavy truck in our fleet and this truck has access to chain tires. So this will be the, this will be the one that we use to haul those heavy trailers that we've been putting off. It's a pretty mean looking truck. It also, has access to the standard gearboxes like the off-road and the high range so that kind of sets it apart from some of the other heavy trucks that are forced to use the advanced and advanced special gearboxes almost there and now we'll just hang a left into the parking lot and pull it right up into the box on the left just like we had to do with the hummer on northport map and the dairy longhorn is ours let's jump into it and drive it into the garage as you can see it's pretty damaged it will drive. You can't. You have to feather the throttle or else it's going to jump right into neutral. We'll bring the cat in also so we can get a big engine put in it right away. I'm going to go with the top engine on this one and I'll sell off the stock engine. We can also put the advanced special gearbox in it. And as far as tires go, it comes stock with these tires that are on it by default. These tires are best for off-road use out of the four non-DLC selection. So the top one here, MS MSH1, is kind of like a balanced tire and it's pretty, it's the lowest in all of the specs. And then if you go to the MSH2, these are basically the tires that are high in mud rating. They're like a 3.2 in mud rating. The MSH3 are also good in mud and off-road, but lower in both of them. And then the fours are your standard off-road or yeah off-road tire so i think what i'll do is put in the msh2s because we will be using this in some heavy mud later on and then we can also give it an advanced heavy winch and we have a container carrier it'll carry the two slot cargo containers and then also a fuel carrier holds 1600 liters and then we have a medium log carrier so for now i'll just leave it with no add-on because i'm not taking it back out and then with the dairy, we've got the Westline V12 M900. That's the engine we just picked up on the last episode. I'm going to put a high range gearbox in it. There's no option for raised suspension. As far as tires go, I'm going all the way down to the bottom and putting on the OHD2 all chains and we'll sell off the default tires. Put an advanced heavy winch in. You do have access to this spare wheel kit. It has two big spare wheels up on the top. It's pretty mean looking like that, right? I think I'll leave them off for now. And then the snorkel, I'm just going to go for the tallest one, which is the second one, wedge cap. Frame add-ons, you have a saddle high and a saddle low. So this truck is kind of unique in the sense that you can pull saddle low trailers with it, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to put a saddle high on it, get some off-road lights. The stock mud flaps, they kind of stick out past the tires and they do have the possibility of getting them stuck in like trees and stuff, but I don't really think we're gonna go through any trees with this, so I'll leave them on for now. Bumper, I'm sticking with the default bumper. This one here isn't bad because it kind of raises the ground clearance, as you can see on the bottom of it there. To the stock, it's pretty much the same though. And it does stick out further, so I'll leave the stock bumper on. Get some horns, sun visor. And put a beacon on it because I like those beacons. You can put the cabin protector on it. I don't know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Gotta have some parking lights and then 
what the heck, might as well give it some horns too, just to top it off. As far as the paint scheme, I think I'm going to go with the DLC color, because it's kind of cool. It's like a moose charging. So yeah, that's our truck. We'll leave it here and jump back into the Fleet Star, and we'll go up to the sawmill and get started on building some of these bridges. I'll get turned around and then I'll mark out on the map where we're going. From here we'll head down the road across the bridge and then we're going to take our first immediate right after that. We'll follow this road all the way down. This is paved road, highway. We're going to head to the log station and we'll grab some wood planks from there. All right, let's go. So we're just heading back down the same way that we came before. The Fleet Star already has chain tires. It's pretty much set up exactly how I want it, so I don't really have a need to take this to the garage for anything. It has the top engine, top winch, chain tires. This map is kind of a combination of both icy highways and off-road back roads. So it's good to have a few trucks that are set up for with chain tires and a few trucks that are set up with like off-road tires. And then you can kind of use them for different things. This will be our chain tire highway runner. Kind of have to be careful on this one, this hill. You get going a little too fast here. Make sure you hit the brakes when you need to. Just up ahead is the log station. We'll have to turn right here. Or actually, not right there. It's the next turn. We'll have to turn right here. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh. Serious? I hit the ground really hard. Kind of did a nose plant. And then the truck tipped over. So I guess that's going to sit there. We don't have anything close by that we can use to flip it back up. So we'll head into Mountain River. We can get started on the first contract in this area, which is going to be drilling equipment. We'll jump in the GMC and we can pick up one oversized drilling equipment container that's right here where we're at. Also, I noticed my suspension is kind of low, so I'm going to repair this thing real quick since we're here. And there's a service trailer right there. Last time we used the GMC was when we hauled long logs over here and we unloaded them out of this truck for the Mountain River logging contract. Get repaired, detach. Let's get connected to that trailer and then we'll head up into White Valley. We'll be going right by the Fleet Star so we can use it, use this to tip it back up. So from here we just leave the service site or whichever this is called drill site drilling service site something like that once we get out of here we'll just take a left we'll be coming out right by the sawmill this is kind of a heavy load but i think the gmc will do just fine so we'll hang a left here and go around the sawmill following the highway and then we'll go right up the steep hill right up at the top is the white valley gateway so let's do it and here we go i do enjoy driving the gmc I don't get to drive it that often anymore because we have other trucks that just seem to do better in the off-road. So it's always nice when I get to jump on the highway and take this thing for a cruise. Coming up to the top of the hill, we're almost to the gateway. And there it is. Now that we're through, we'll just continue down across the bridge, take that right-hand turn again, follow the highway down. Once we get close to the bottom here, we can flip up the Fleet Star and then we'll continue along continue on down the road until we get to the drilling site and we'll get unloaded right there let's go just gotta be a little mindful at this first section here that you don't get hung up on the guardrails trying to go around these corners makes a big difference though when you have chain tires for sure a lot more control crossing that bridge take our first immediate right turn around that corner perfect and then it's all highway cruising so i'll just put it in auto just making sure I don't get going too fast over the top of this hill. Going down the other side can be a little tricky. I'll leave it in high gear so it doesn't pick up too much speed. Now I can go back to auto. This will be the first contract that unlocks like the rest of the contracts that are in this map. Once we get this done, a whole plethora of them will be unlocked. Okay, now that we're here, we can back up just a little bit, I guess. So I can get a better access on that Fleet Star. There it is. And then I'll give it a yank over. Make sure to start it and get it pulled ahead a little bit before I disconnect. Just up ahead is our drop-off point at the drill site. So we'll run up there and get this delivered. Turning left now into the drill site. I like to follow the road around this side, make a wide turn. And now that we're here, we can deliver this. 
That one's complete. Let's jump back into the Fleet Star now that we have it flipped up. And we'll continue on with the bridge, the bridge building task that we were working on. This isn't actually the one, there's two bridge building tasks. This one that I have tracking only requires two service spare parts, which there's a trailer up here that has two service spare parts already loaded, but we're gonna do the other one, the long bridge. So we'll get two wooden planks. We'll follow the road out of the log station here. And once we get out of this deep stuff, kind of bouncing our way through there, we can turn left here into the trees We'll go right between these trees and get down on the bottom. Nice. And we'll just follow the side of this this wall. There's another big trailer we gotta pull. And if you stay close to the wall, you can see there's a fuel carrier trailer right there. A little scout trailer. You can actually refuel off of it from here. So we'll do that. And then just being careful not to flip over on this side hill. We'll stay to the close to the wall again and just follow it right around the side here. Then we can go into this service site here and pick up that sideboard trailer that has the two service spare parts on it. So it's debatable about which bridge to build first. I like to build this bridge first because it gives us shorter access to the, the other service site that has the service spare parts. And then we can just grab service spare parts from there and run back and build the, the short bridge. Otherwise you have to drive all the way around to get to it. Well, we have this trailer discovered. We'll connect to it. Get it pulled out here a little ways. Now we're connected to it. So we can pull it right around the corner here. And here's the drop off for the long bridge. We'll get that done right away. Let's turn in the wooden planks first. Wooden planks have to be turned in first. So if you come over here with the service spare parts, it won't even let you turn them in. And we'll turn these in and build that beautiful bridge. Wonderful. Now from here, we'll activate the other bridge task. And as you can see on the map, service hub is just up ahead there. So we'll drive up the road and get reloaded. We'll get repaired there also. And our truck needs it because we've definitely beat it up a little bit. This is another section of road that you can get going too fast on. If you're not careful, especially coming back the other way. It's got kind of a downhill slope. Now that we're here, we can turn left right into the service hub. We'll get loaded and repaired at the same time. I'm going to grab four because there's a contract coming up that we'll need more service spare parts for so we'll just bring them up here and that way we won't have to come over here again to get loaded we'll bring them up and just leave them up there one of the other trucks can grab them out of the trailer being careful here oh man that was a pretty rough one just got going too fast coming up through the bridge now cruise right through here it's a long bridge it's double the length of the other ones once we're up here we'll just continue around the road to the right Instead of turning left on the highway, we'll go straight into the mud. It's pretty thick through here, but if you stay a little bit to the left, it kind of helps. I'm just going to leave it in high gear and all-wheel drive engaged. Might have to go down to diff lock now. As you can see, it is pretty thick through here, but not impossible. Not for us. We got this. Now I'm going to swing hard to the right so I can make sure that the trailer is off the road and out of the way because I'm going to leave the trailer here. We'll turn these in, get the bridge built right away. Another beautiful thing. Nice. Now that that's done, I'll pull ahead just a little bit. I'm going to unpack the cargo, detach the trailer. Now we can get started on the building materials task. We need to pick up the th three bricks out of the river. So I'm going to drive straight down into the riverbed here. Since we have a crane, we might as well head over here and do this. We can run right up the bottom of the river. Stay to the side because it's pretty deep in the middle. It's not too deep to drown us or anything, but it's just going to slow you down quite a bit. I can use high high gear through here and make some pretty good speed without any real issue. I'm going to have to go to the right side now, follow the bank, and just keep on trucking up the riverbed. The bricks are just up ahead. Go across so I can get to the stuff that's a little bit more shallow. Perfect. Keep following the riverbed up. We're going to drive right past the first brick. Just like when we were in Mountain River, we had to do a similar task of loading three bricks that were down in the riverbed. Since we're coming back this way, there's no sense in loading that first one up until we get back here, because we'll be double stacking one brick. The riverbed can be kind of bouncy because of all the big rocks that you hit. So there's no reason to have extra weight on. I'm gonna go right up over the top, 
go around the second brick. And the third brick is up the road. I guess another way to do this, we could have per could have just taken the highway up to the factory, turned off and came down the river instead of driving up the river. Probably would have been a lot easier actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Either way, we're gonna get there and we'll get it done. I'll get to this brick here, I'll open the map and show you what, what I'm referring to. Almost there. There's a couple of deep spots here. Now that we're here, I'll open the map up here and show you what I was just talking about. So we were right here and we came up the river like this and followed this all the way up to here. But now I'm thinking about it, we could have just taken the highway up here like this and then turned down this road and we would have gotten there probably a lot easier. For sure a lot easier. So that would probably be the best route to take. Doesn't matter. We'll get loaded up and we can turn around and start our journey back down the river to get the rest of the bricks loaded. We'll take these to the sawmill. Shouldn't be as bad going down the river. We don't have to fight the current. Just be careful not to tip over. I'm going to go up the hill here. Instead of following that around the bend, there's some pretty big rocks through there that we just came across. I'm going to go up over the top of this instead. There's a road right here. You got to be careful not to tip over right there. It's kind of uneven. I think we can reach that brick from here. I'll get my boom extended out as far as possible and then pull it back with the boom. Before I start raising it, I'll get it closer to the truck so it doesn't tip me over. There we go. Now we have two of them loaded. I'm actually going to unpack these because that additional weight is making me more unstable and I do not want to flip. Now I can continue going down the river. We could also take that road, but if you remember on the last episode, we took that road with the Chevy and it's pretty deep mud. I think with all of this weight, and our chain tires, it's not that we can't get through there, it's just gonna slow us down. Versus taking the riverbed here, it's all solid rock. It's icy rock, but it's solid. We have chain tires, so this would be the best path for us. Now I can pack the cargo, get this last brick loaded up. We'll just put it right on the top, put the crane right over the top of it to hold it down. Definitely gonna take it easy through here, so we don't wibble wobble our way onto the side of our truck. So you can see we got a pretty good lean going. Front tire is off the ground. We're getting it done though. And just up ahead is the sawmill. There it is. Ooh, I just about tipped. Caught a winch just in time though. I'm gonna go through the fence. Love going through the fences. So now our cargo is unpacked. I'll need to pack it again. I believe we turned it in right here. It's not telling me because nothing's packed. I think it gets turned in here, but I'm, I could be wrong. So before I pack this, I've got to lift this brick up out of the way or else it's going to delete it. And then I'll have to restart the task. Now I can get this packed and then I'll set the brick back down. I was incorrect. It looks like we have to drop this off in the loading zone there, which is fine. I'll just back up. So back up into place and drop these off. Repack the third one. There we go. Building materials is now complete. From here we have the trucks and investigations task. We'll need to get out a truck with a low saddle that we can pick that trailer up and haul it back to the garage. You know what? Let's do this. We're going to take the dairy longhorn over there, but we do got to remember to put a low saddle on it first. Let's try this thing out. So once we leave the garage, instead of following it around to the outside of the parking lot, I'm going to turn left immediately. This truck does not turn sharp, by the way. You'll be making some wide corners. It does have all time all wheel drive and all time diff lock, which is pretty nice but it has a tag axle, as you can see there, that is not powered. So it gets hung up on sharp hills. You do have to watch out for that. We'll follow this right around to the left. It really does power through this stuff though when you use the high gear with the high range gearbox. And then we'll turn right on this back road that goes right by the logging station. We've been over here a few times, so we know where we're going. And just leave it in high. Look at this thing, it just powers right through all of this. Heck yes. <laughs> Follow this road past the logging station. It's off to the right there. We're gonna go past it. Follow it right down into the mud. Trucking through this stuff. It's nothing. Now this is gonna slow us down here. I'm gonna stay to the right where it's a little less muddy. Just watching out for those stumps. Spam my clutch button. And there it is. And then I'm gonna follow the right side of the riverbed. Watching out for rocks, of course. 
The bumper is kind of low on the front, so you got to be careful that it doesn't get hung up on, on rocks and stuff like that. Now I can get turned around before I back up to that trailer. Should be able to. We're pushing mud with the bumper, so I'll have to make a wider, a sharper turn, I guess, not wider. The <laughs> water's really deep here. Wow, the whole front of my truck is sunk. But there's a lot of stuff to winch to, so I'm not worried about getting stuck. Just keep winching your way through here. And I'm back out. And I'll back up to this and get hooked up to it. There it is. Now we'll leave here. Just go back out the same way we came in. Stand to the left, of course. Instead of driving through the bottom where it's deep. And then same as before, I'll, I'll follow the left side out of here. Now contrary to what a person would think, if you put the tag axle down, which it gives you the option to raise and lower it, if you put it down in this muddy stuff, it actually kind of helps. I don't know why it shouldn't, but it pushes, or I don't know if it makes it so that you float on the mud a little bit more by having extra wheels on the ground. In real life, you definitely would want it raised here. Just gonna spider winch by using my first person view and just work my way through here. Now we've gotten through that stuff, we can cruise. It's a pretty mean looking truck. It's tall, it's got a cool paint job. The cool moose. Now we're getting some good speed going. About to get out of here and get back to the main road. So when I'm playing hard mode, instead of delivering this, I usually just run it right up the road there to the intersection and I unhook it and leave it there. And it becomes my fuel source. And then when I get to done with the region, I just back it up and drop it off here. Trucks and Investigations is complete. And that's where we're gonna leave it for today. We'll catch you on the next one when we get started doing the contract run in White Valley. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.